chapter 22, section 1. This chapter is about Vietnam. And one thing I encourage you guys to do, talk to your grandparents. Call them up. Um, they're probably bored in quarantine. You probably are too. And chances are they lived through this, so they probably have some really interesting insight into it, even more, more so than I do. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, um, I want to start out by saying that originally Vietnam was under French control. And this was before World War II. Uh, during World War II, the Japanese kind of took over Vietnam, but after that was over, the French got it back. Okay? And the thing was that most Americans, they didn't even know where Vietnam was. Okay? But Vietnam, as you can see here in the picture, here's China. Um, and then Vietnam is going to be located right here. At the time, they called it Indochina, and it was made up of modern-day um, modern Vietnam, Laos, and Cambodia. Okay. Um, and the problem with the French is there were a lot of very poor people who were living in Vietnam, and they were being taken advantage of by the French colonialists. And so, you know, at this point, America, we weren't really fans of colonialism, but, you know, the French were our allies, so we were putting up with it. And if you guys are wondering what I'm doing, there's, like, hair stuck to me, so I'm trying to get rid of it. Sorry. Okay. Now, there's this guy, and his name is Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh, um, he lived in France, or I'm sorry, he lived in Vietnam, but the thing was, he got tired of the French control, so he left. He was gone from Vietnam for like 30 years. He traveled all over the world, and um, Ho Chi Minh, what you'll need to know on your worksheet about him, he was the one who demanded independence from France, and he embraced communism, okay? And that's because part of those 30 years he was gone, he was in Moscow, and, you know, Moscow's in Russia, and obviously they're the communists. So he found people who supported him. Okay? Um, and that's the thing, and that's the reason that we don't like him, because he is a communist. Okay, and this leads us to talk about the domino theory. And this is why Vietnam mattered to the United States. Because, you know, we are terrified of communism. And this theory came out at this time that if Vietnam fell to communism, all of its neighbors would fall too, like a domino. Now, right here I have cards. Um, I know they're at the wrong angle for you to see them very good. But here's the idea. Pretend they're dominoes. You knock one domino down, all of the other dominoes fall too. So the theory was that if Vietnam fell to communism, all of the other nations around it would too. And we didn't want that because China and the Soviet Union had fallen already, and Korea. So we're worried about it. So Vietnam is the key to containing communism. Okay. Now, there is a city in Vietnam. It's called Dien Bien Phu, and it was a French military base. And in, let me give you the year. Let's see. Oh, I can't remember the year exactly. But anyhow, so... The, the, it's a French military base, and it's going to be attacked by the Viet Minh. Viet Minh were people who supported communism. They supported Ho Chi Minh, and so they're going to attack this French military base. And the French are being supported by the United States. At the time, we gave them $2.6 billion. That translates into about $2.5 trillion today. We gave them a ton of money to try and, you know, hold off communism. It wasn't that we necessarily didn't want Vietnam to be independent, we just didn't want them to be communists. So we're trying to support them with money. But what's going to happen is the uh, Viet Minh, they are going to lay siege to this French military base for 55 days. And the French suffered over 15,000 casualties. As a result, they ended up having to surrender in May of 1954. And at this point, the, the very next day, we're going to have a, a meeting in Geneva, Switzerland, where the Geneva Accords are signed. Essentially what happens, France gives independence to Vietnam. 
And Vietnam is then going to be divided in two countries along the 17th parallel. And I mean, this kind of sounds a lot like what happened with Korea. But in the north, we're going to have a communist regime. And in the south, we're going to have a non-communist regime that is supported by the United States. Okay? And so uh, the eventual plan is that in 1956, there's going to be a free election held and the people of Vietnam will vote on one ruler, one type of government, and instead of having two Vietnams, we're going to have one united Vietnam. That's the plan. Well, plans don't always go as, as planned, obviously. Um, but on this slide, be sure you know Dien Bien Phu. Phu. Um, that was the French garrison that the Viet Minh laid siege to. And that's a picture of Ho Chi Minh. And those are pictures of Vietnam. It's actually really beautiful. And my technology is awful. Okay, so after this happens, the United States is going to pretty much lead the charge on, you know, we do not want communism to spread. So CETO was created, the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization. And essentially, its job is to contain the spread of communism in Southeast Asia. Okay? And so there were a lot of countries that joined. But the United States at this point, they are supporting the non-communist regime, which is going to be led by a guy named No Dien Bien. Okay? He is an anti-communist, and that is the only reason that we support him. The people of South Vietnam didn't like him. He wasn't very popular, but he wasn't a communist. So we were like, heck yeah, let's support this dude. Um, one of the reasons he was not popular, he was a Roman Catholic. And that in itself isn't an issue, but the fact was the majority of people living in Vietnam were Buddhist. And DM, he put anti-Buddhist legislation into practice to persecute Buddhist people, which was the majority of the country which was kind of ridiculous. And so he wasn't popular. So when 1956 rolls around, they're supposed to have these free elections. He knows that he's going to lose, so he refuses to participate. And the United States actually encouraged that because, you know, we don't want to be a loser. That's a picture of him right there. Um, and in addition to this, we also have the National Liberation Front to take into consideration, a.k.a. the Viet Cong. These are going to be essentially guerrilla fighters that are going to launch an insurgency against South Vietnam. Okay, um, They're going to undermine Diem and they're going to try and unite Vietnam into one communist nation. But as I said, you know, he's not, he's, Diem is not supported by the people. A lot of people became Viet Cong and that was a problem. So at this time, um, 1961, our president is John F. Kennedy. So what he wants to do is, we haven't sent any troops to Vietnam at this point, but he decides we need to help them out. So he sends troops to help the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, AKA South Vietnam. But these troops are what we call advisor troops, okay? They're not, they're supposed to be able to help the the army of the Republic of Vietnam to, you know, fight the North Vietnamese. But really, these are our first troops that are fighting, okay? Um, so the, these advisor troops, they were really doing fighting and dying. But eventually, Diem was removed from power. We helped with that. And later, he was assassinated because he was so unpopular, and we realized that we could never have success with this. But I want you guys to pay attention to this picture up here. This is a picture of a Buddhist monk who set himself on fire. And this is a very famous photograph because in Vietnam, this was happening more often than we would like to admit because people were unhappy with DM. Obviously, this was before he was removed. But I'm going to show you guys a video. And I'll be honest with you, this video is um, disturbing. So please watch with caution. But I think it's important for you guys to see, you know, what exactly was happening. <laughs>
tries to show that in order to fight every form of oppression on equal terms, Buddhism too needs its martyrs. Okay, so that should be the first section. 